We are right now dealing with chapter 10, 21. Hashem said to Moses, Stretch forth your hand toward the heavens, and there shall be darkness upon the land of Egypt, and the darkness will become darker. The Yom Hashem El Moshe, God said to Moses, Not that you ought to call Hashem Layim, raise, right, stretch forth your hand upon the heavens. The Hoshech Al Eretz Mitzrayim, and it's going to be darkness upon it. Egypt, the land of Egypt, the Yamesh Choshech. This is these are the words we're now going to discuss. What does it mean, the Yamesh Choshech? So it's it, there's many different explanations, but it became darker as we just explained in the English translation. It would even become darker. That is one of the explanations in Rashi. There's another explanation that says that it was doubled. Here we go. Midrash Agada Potru, the Midrash Agada explains or interprets. What does it mean, Vyamesh Khoshech? Lashin Mimashesh Bitsarayim. Like groping around, feeling. Okay? Shahaya Kaful, Mikupal Ra'av. It was so thick. It was doubled. It was so thick. Achayabo Mamash. Until it actually had substance. So we have like a few different words here that, you know, the word viamesh could mean, like we just said, mamashos. It has the same, like, root. It also has, for feeling around or groping, viamesh. And Kliakar is going to explain it a little different here. And he says, viamesh choshech is lashon hasara, meaning it's a language of removal, which is very difficult to explain and understand the way we just said it. So if you look in chapter 13, verse 22, the verse that deals with the cloud of glory and the pillar of fire that protected us while we were in the desert, it says, Vimish, God did not remove those protections, meaning there was always one or the other. There was never a moment, even a split second, a nanosecond, where one of these two protections were not surrounding us. So you have... Yud Mem Yud Shin Yamish Over here is Yamish So he says the same language Loshan of removal Which is very difficult to understand But he's going to do a pretty good job Yad Kimitev Sabria Since or because of the fact That the way creation was made And I think this is a very deep metaphysical idea We're going to explain it on a very simple physical level, but try to use your imagination on a metaphysical level. We're talking spirituality here. Yanki Miteva Bria because of the nature of creation. That every person, every human being has both. He has a day, he even has a night. What exactly did God do here where we're talking about a removal? How can you remove a night? Everybody has it. That he removed the just the regular darkness of night from the gvul, that's a physical boundary of Israel. So we must be talking about the land of Israel, although I think that we could metaphysically speak about the Jews in general. And he placed that darkness upon the land of Egypt. Therefore, what you had in Egypt was a double darkness. As we saw in Rashi, with the Sibas Yom, and it's on account of this. This is the very reason. Also, we have to understand what he's about to explain to us. He's talking about Rishoyim cannot function at night, or can have a hard time functioning when it's dark. He says he brings down in the first book of Samuel, chapter two, verse nine. Part of the verse is Rishoyim bechoshek yidamu, that evil people cannot function in the darkness, cannot function the Choshek. Ki lo ayalo zman shamesh kim biyom. Because really the only time that a person can function, and I think in this case he's talking about the Rishoyim, is only during the day. Sharei halayla belav hachi afeila. 
because if it wasn't for the darkness, he would be able to function at night. But because of the darkness, he's not able to. And I think we're talking spirituality here, the, 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 the opposite of a close connection to Hashem. And it's for this very reason that the children of Israel, the Jewish nation, had light in their dwelling place, even at night. We're talking about during these three days of darkness. That even at night they were able to see, whereas the Egyptians, even during the day, were not able to see. Rem is Ludovar. He says there's a hint of the matter. If you look back into um, two, two verses ahead, verse 23, it says towards the end of the verse, Luchovan Israel, Hoya, or the Meshwatan. And all the children of Israel had. So if you look at Luchovan Israel, Hoya, the last letters of those four words. Lamed of Lachol, Yud of B'nai, Lamed of Yisrael, and the last word we're dealing with is Hoya, with another He, spells out the word Lila. Arba Tevos Elu Sofam Osios Lila. Those four words, if you look at the last, their last letters, spells out the word Lila. Ach, Arkakativ, and then there's two more words in that verse. Or B'moshevotam. There was light in their dwellings. So even at night, the Jews had light. As if to say, Shagam Laila Haya or the Israel. That even at night, the Jews had light. Kamoshinamar, just like it says if you look in Psalms in Tehillim, 139, verse 11. David Melch said, the Lila or Ba'adaini, that even at night I have the light all around me. It was there, Rashi, and this is now we understand what Rashi meant when he said, that the darkness was double, meaning 24 hours. I knew, can meet this young Lila. What's the measurement of day and night? 24 hours. Okay, so there's three days of darkness, so you had 72 full hours of darkness. Now what about the Jews? What about the Bnei Israel? We just said that they had light. First of all, the next part of this clear card is really, really interesting. He says, So he's asking, like, it's really, why did Rashi come and ask, and that's what Rashi does, he asks, why it's actually the Rashi in uh, verse 22. Why was this plague of darkness brought upon the Israel? Why is it such a question? Rashi came You know, Rashi did not ask this question by any of the other nine plagues, only this one. So that should bother us. We should wonder why. The fish He's going to explain something very deep in terms of free will. Not just the God's ability to take free will away, but for a very constructive purpose, which we will see at the end. The fish of Akola Makos, since all the other Makos, the other nine plagues. Ilu Paro writes in the Shub the Shuba. See, if Paro wanted to repent, while the plague was still functioning in other words during the week usually the plagues had three weeks of mourning where Moses let Pharaoh know that the plague was coming that he could do true before it happened then there was usually a whole week of functioning of the plague itself and then we were on to the next plague that's usually how the majority of them worked so if Pharaoh wanted to return and repent while the actual plague was happening, he could have, because he even squirmed a few times while the plague was happening and begged that it stop. But here, the verse itself says, no man was able to get up, he wasn't able to get up from his place for three days. So I think metaphysically here it means get up from this place. He wasn't able to move. As we described, it was so thick. But I think we're talking metaphysically. A man could not move from his place. He couldn't even do chuv if he wanted to. If he, even if he wanted to do chuv within those three days. Lo He certainly was not able to. So we want to know why did God do this? 
Why did Hashem bring this about? See, even though Hashem hardens the, the heart of Pharaoh, Hainu meaning the Pisha Hainu Shu Miatsmo Hitchalubavo that Pharaoh himself had hardened his own heart. While the plague was still functioning, Al Kain Dinu Lahakshas Lubavo Akhir Sur Hamaka. So then certainly the logic would dictate that he would harden his own heart again after the Maka was removed and finished. I mean, look, if a Maka came to you Right? So while it's happening, you're going to have regret and you're going to ask for mercy. But once it's removed, your heart would, your heart would harden again and you wouldn't be interested. You'd stick to your guns and be stubborn. But when it came to Choshech, about Machus to Choshech, when it came to the, the plague of darkness, even while, even if he wanted to do Tshuva while the plague was still functioning, he was nowhere near capable or able to. And that's the big question. And now we're going to rephrase Rashi's question. He, I mean, this is the way the Kli Kar understands it, and it makes total sense. When Rashi says, why was the, the, the plague brought upon Paro, and he only asks it here, he's asking like this, This is the question of questions. This is what Rashi really wants to know when he asks, Why did Hashem bring this plague? Which would pre- and, and preventing him while preventing him from doing tshuva, which is not the case by any other maka. And that was the question that Rashi was asking, and Rashi himself answers it. Kliyakar brings down four words of Rashi, but we're going to see the whole Rashi in a second. El Mishum Rishay Yisrael. Rather, the reason why God did not allow Paro to do Chuga while the Maka was in, in action, in functioning, was on account of or because of the evil Israelites. There were a certain amount of evil Israelites amongst the Jewish people at the time. And that is what I'm going to read the rest of the Rashi to you now. Okay, I opened it up. Okay. Lama Hevi Oleim Why did Hashem bring the plague of darkness against them? Shayu Yisrael Bo'ayshem Adur Rishoyim. There were amongst the Jewish people, amongst the B'nai Israel, that generation, wicked individuals. The lo hayu roitzim l'tzeit. Can you believe this? You're called evil if you didn't want to leave Egypt. I mean, they were going somewhere. They were going to Eretz Israel. They didn't want to leave Egypt to go to Israel. And these Jews died during the three days of darkness, the three days of gloom. In order that the Egyptians should not see their downfall, the Jews who were going to be killed during this nine, the ninth plague, the plague of darkness, Hashem did not want the Egyptians to see those Israelites die. Why? What would happen if the Egyptians saw them die? So they would say, hey, we're, we're, this is not from God necessarily. Or, I mean, look, there's a purpose for this mock, all the Makos, and that was to humble them and to get across the point, the main point that God is the creator of the world. He wanted the whole world to know, especially the Egyptians. So if, he sees, if they see the Jews die during the ten, ninth plague, they might say, ah, we're not going to take all this seriously. It's not necessarily directed towards us. Even the Jews, even the Israelites, saw um, casualties. Okay, we're going to discuss this a little bit more at length. I do want to go into this next part of Rashi, which the Kliyakar is not talking about, but I think it's just important because it's not like an alternative answer. It's a continuation. V'od shu Yisrael lehem. So what happened while it was dark? It was only dark for the Egyptians. As we mentioned, the Jews could still see. So the, the Israelites went out into the Egyptians' homes, and they saw, they sought out, and they saw the vessels, 
what do you mean which vessels? The ones that they were going to take when they left after the tenth plague. So when they were going to leave, they were going to ask, they were going to borrow vessels from the Egyptians. So if they didn't know where they were, the Egyptians could simply say, and they did say, oh, we don't know what you're talking about. We don't possess these things you're coming and asking us for. You know, we say, I want this gold uh, watch of yours, or gold uh, bracelets, whatever they had at the time, and they would be in denial. And then the Jew would turn around and say, Amr lo, he would respond to the Egyptian by saying, Ani rota b'beitcha v'makam ploinu. I know exactly where it is. I saw it in your house. It's in this place or that place. And then the Egyptian basically had to give it up. Okay, so what's going on here? Is this crazy? So the Jewish people fell. There was a falling of certain amount of Jews in Egypt. And it's during the plague of darkness, so the Egyptians cannot see. That would have been a bad thing if they saw. The message that God wanted to get across would not have come across, either at all or as strong. So, later on it says that the Jewish people went up. They went up. What is Hamushim? We're going to discuss this in next week's Parsha. Hamushim could mean and should mean armed. However, we also understand it as they went up who? One fifth. One fifth. Where did one, how did what happened to the other four fifths of the Jewish people? How come only one fifth of the Jews went up? We just saw the reason there was a downfall of certain Jews, the Rishi Israel, was because they didn't want to leave Egypt. And what was the percentage? Four fifths. That's 80% of the Israelites did not want to leave Egypt. And therefore, they saw their graves. They saw their burial. They saw their demise. They never got to see the land of Israel. And this is kind of like what's happening today. I mean, I'm not really supposed to talk any politics here, but it's just too amazing uh, in a negative sense that history repeats itself. I certainly hope not. I pray that our Jewish brethren, especially all the people that I grew up with, who were not so uh, in neither Zionistic nor uh, observant nor religious or tied to the, the Bible or tied to the Tanakh or tied to the religion of the Masorah, of the heritage of the Jewish people. Um, but I hope that we, we as a nation wake up. And this is my message to them, this happened in the past. It doesn't mean it has to happen in the future. The Bible is a book of prophecy. And what happened to our forefathers happens to us. This is something, this is one of the fundamental principles in Judaism. Maisa Avos, similar body, and what happened to our forefathers is a foreshadowing, foreshadowing of what could and lie for, in, in ahead for us. And I pray that, I pray for Shuva, for the nation, and for myself especially, that we should continue to move in a positive direction. Amen.